So I'm standing in front of the entrance of the, um, the Selfridge Air Force Base, home of the Michigan Air National Guard. And um, it's just north of Detroit um, in Harrison Township, Michigan, um, on the uh, coast of Lake St. Clair. And I'm here to tell you why it's called Selfridge Air Force Base. It's kind of a cool story. Um, Selfridge is kind of an interesting cat. Uh, Thomas Selfridge was born in 1882. He was the grandson and son, respectively, of Thomas O. Selfridge and Thomas O. Selfridge Jr. Both were rear admirals in the U.S. Navy. In fact, they were the first rear admirals that were uh, uh, in, on active duty at the exact same time. But that's another thing altogether. Anyway, Thomas Selfridge, the, uh, the grandson, um, only lives 26 years, but it's in that 26 years that, that some really cool things happened to him, mostly in between uh, his 21st and 26th and final year. Anyway, I'll tell you more about it. Come on. Okay, so uh, Thomas Selfridge graduates from West Point Academy in 1903. Um, he's 31st in his class of 96. Uh, number one in that class in 2003 was none other, none other than Douglas MacArthur. Um, anyway, in, in 1907, Selfridge finds himself out at the Presidio, stationed at the Presidio in San Francisco, uh, during the Great San Francisco Earthquake. And uh, he becomes part of the search and rescue mission and is really involved in that. Later in 1907, um, he goes to, uh, he gets appointed to the uh, aeronautical division of the Signal Corps. Now, you gotta keep in mind that in the early 1900s, certainly in 1907, uh, we didn't have very many airplanes, like at all. The Wright Brothers Flyer was first uh, successfully flown in 1903, and they were developing it all along. But the other real aircrafts were mostly things like uh, dirigibles and things like that. In fact, Thomas Selfridge becomes uh, one of the first pilots of uh, uh, US Dirigible One, which is the first dirigible to go up. Anyway, um, in early 1908, uh, Selfridge then joins the uh, Aerial Experimental Group uh, from the U.S. government. And that is chaired by none other than the great Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, and in fact, uh, Selfridge becomes the first pilot and the only pilot, I think, to fly in um, an Alexander Graham Bell's uh, tetrahedral. And if you got to see this thing, look it up online. It's like this giant kite uh, with a bunch of... Um, uh, cells in it and I think he climbed in the middle of it it went up to like 150 160 feet and that was considered flying at the time uh, so he does that um, he actually also designs his own plane it's called the Red Wing and that thing flew 300 feet uh, so he became really the first US military pilot uh, Thomas Selfridge did but it was in September of, of 1908 that ironically and tragically uh, Thomas Selfridge uh, meets his demise. Um, this whole time, as I said, the Wright brothers were actually flying planes that weren't going up for 300 feet. They were actually flying around. And Orville Wright was in Fort Myers, Virginia, doing a military demonstration when uh, and Selfridge was there and said, look, can I fly along? I'd like to be a passenger. So he puts them in the passenger seat and they fly around. And they're doing about five, six circuits around. And in uh, and the plane, the, the, the propeller catches one of the guide wires on the right flyer and it goes down, nose first and crashes. Orville Wright survives. Uh, he's really messed up. He's uh, broken hips, ribs, everything. But Thomas Selfridge dies. Um, the propeller piece came off, struck him in the head um, and uh, fractured his skull and he died. Therefore, Thomas Selfridge becomes the very first person ever to die in a powered airplane. And uh, and that's his claim to fame, unfortunately, but that's also why I told you a little bit of his backstory and the fact that he has an Air Force base named after him. Anyway, uh, I hope you like this. If you'd like to see more of these, visit our website, stunt3.com, and we'll see you next time.